Hey guys, it's Professor Pro, and when Animal Crossing releases in March, we'll have come to the end of a 7 year long journey of waiting for New Horizons. Or as 2017 me would have called it, Animal Crossing Switch. Or as 2014 me would have called it, Animal Crossing U. It's crazy to think about how long we've been waiting for this title, begging for Nintendo to show it off at every Direct in E3. And now it's almost in our grasp. So because we're so close to the game's release, I knew what I had to do. One last wish list. I really didn't think I had that much to talk about, but before I knew it, I was making a 30 things I want video. So without further ado, I present to you my final Animal Crossing New Horizons wish list. Number 1. Cooking. Anyone that has stuck around this channel for a while knows that I absolutely adore the idea of cooking in Animal Crossing. I've made multiple videos on the subject, and I truly believe the addition would add a ton of charm to New Horizons. Instead of just asking for apples every two seconds, animals could instead ask for an apple pie. A fruit salad, maybe. Using fish, fruit, and other ingredients such as honey from beehives would allow for this to be a very easy process, especially because of New Horizons crafting system. Number 2. More Nighttime Events I know I'm probably in the minority here, but my favorite time to play Animal Crossing is actually during the evening and night, from about 5pm to midnight. It's when I find the games to be most relaxing and laid back, which is unfortunate since there's usually not much to do when half your animals are asleep and the stores are closed. I just want a little more to happen during the night, enough to make more people want to stay up and experience it. Whether that be my KK Under the Stars concert concept from a while ago, or something else entirely, I'll be satisfied. Number 3. Rossetti getting a meaningful job I love Mr. Rossetti, in fact I'd go as far as to say he's one of my favorite Animal Crossing characters. So to see him kind of reduced to an optional character that you have to pay hundreds of thousands of bells to get in New Leaf was… a little sad. He's getting a new job in New Horizons, so hopefully he finds one that allows us to see him a little more often. Maybe being in charge of construction like I suggested a while back. Number 4. The On Lyland One of my most wanted features in New Horizons is for there to be some sort of online area for players to interact that isn't someone's island. Cleverly named the On Lyland because I'm a genius, this area would be a little market where players could hang out. The market would allow for many different purchases, the most important of which being patterns that players made themselves. This would be an easy way to get around the Switch's lack of a camera capable of reading QR codes, as well as creating more incentive for artists to be creative, since they'd be rewarded with bells if players liked and bought their design. Number 5. More Animal Personality The animals in New Horizons definitely need more depth than in previous games. I want animals to actually feel like they're different based off their personalities. Maybe instead of the jock animals telling us they love working out for the 80th time, we can actually see them going for a jog around town on a hot day. Also, animals need more to do that doesn't revolve around just standing around. We've already seen a glimpse of this with Butch in the September trailer, so if we could get more cute stuff like this, I would be very happy. Number 6. Different Paths Nintendo finally giving us a path making tool is amazing, and I can't wait to use it, but I feel like if it was the only type of path available, a lot of towns might start to feel a little samey. I think it would be cool if you could craft cement of some sort, or maybe just be able to place stone or wood on your dirt path to make it look more interesting. Number 7. Kites The addition of wind in New Horizons is one of my favorite new features, even though it might seem small. I think something that could add to the charm of this new weather system could be kites. Being able to sit down next to one of your favorite animals on a windy day, flying a kite with your own custom pattern on it as they fly their own, well, that just sounds incredibly wholesome. Number 8. More Interactivity New Leaf took a huge step in the right direction with public works projects, but there was one major problem with them. They didn't really do much. Unless it was some sort of establishment like the rooster police station, or something small like a bench, the project kind of just sat there, which was a bit of a bummer. If we're able to build things on a similar scale in New Horizons, I hope we can actually see animals interacting with the things we create, or better yet, can interact with them ourselves. Number 9. Extremely Detailed HD Rumble HD Rumble adds a lot of immersion to most Switch games that it's used in, but I feel like New Horizons could be where it really shines. Maybe the Joy-Con could vibrate a bit if you're out in the winter without a coat, or slightly rumble if you come close to a dig spot that's actually a pitfall. Stuff like this would add a lot of immersion to the game. Number 10. More minigames I thought that the two minigames Nintendo released in New Leaf's Welcome Amiibo update through the 3DS and Wii U items were a lot of fun to play. Desert Island Escape specifically had me come back time and time again.
So I think it would be cool if we got more stuff like that in New Horizons. Each minigame could be on a different system, and eventually, your house could be full of Nintendo history. This would also be another step towards more interactivity with items. Number 11, Messages. Letters are a very important part of the Animal Crossing series. They are pretty much your only way to interact with animals if you aren't face to face with them. But Animal Crossing is evolving, and with the addition of the Nook Phone, I think it's time some additional options be added. And don't get me wrong, I'm not saying Nook Phones should replace letters or something like that, that would remove so much charm from the game. I'm just suggesting something that would enhance your experience in my eyes. What if, when visiting one of your friend's islands, you can ask an animal for their phone number? This would allow for you to chat with them through your Nook phone, even though you're not from the same town. And if it eventually became time for them to move away from your friend's island, they would have a higher chance to come to yours. It would also be cool if an animal could give you their phone number when they decide to move from your town, so you can keep in contact with your favorites. And speaking of Nook phones, that brings us to number 12, the Nook phone app. The Nintendo Switch Online app is pretty useless. I don't use it and I can't think of anyone that does. But, like with most terrible things, adding Animal Crossing to it could make it considerably better. Using the Nook Phone app would allow you to check your crafting recipes, order furniture once you've unlocked a shop that allows it, set reminders for upcoming events like tourneys or holidays, and, most importantly, text animals who've given you their phone numbers. This way, you can always be interacting with your favorite villagers even if you don't have your Switch with you. Number 13, Vegetables. This kind of ties into my cooking idea, but I think it would be great if you could grow vegetables in this game along with the fruit that we've had since the beginning. I don't want it to go full on Stardew Valley with farming or anything, but being able to grow some carrots and other veggies would be nice. Number 14, remove the me head, please, it's horrifying and I hate it. Number 15, more realistic weather events. One of the best part of Animal Crossing's real world clock is the fact that it comes with some really great weather events. Rainy days, snowy days, and now windy days as well. They're all super atmospheric and create a really cozy feeling in the game. But they kinda just come and leave after a day. How cool would it be if there were actual puddles to jump in after a thunderstorm, or an extra layer of snow on the ground after a snowstorm, allowing you to make snow angels and forts? If there were extra piles of leaves on the ground after an especially windy day in the fall? And speaking of weather, number 16, more violent weather events. Sure, Animal Crossing has its storms, even thunder and lightning storms, but I want to see more. With New Horizons being on the Switch, weather could look beautiful, and that's what I want to see. What if one day there's a snowstorm so bad that it closes all of the shops in town, but Nook invites everyone into his building and you all get to sit next to the fireplace with a cup of hot cocoa from Brewster, all of your favorite animals by your side? Yes, I know that is in no way realistic, but this is a wish list, not a prediction video. Number 17, Special Backpacks. Backpacks in New Horizons are kind of a mystery. We know they exist since we've seen them on almost every villager, but Nintendo hasn't addressed them whatsoever, and we don't know if they even do anything. But it's pretty safe to assume that they might grant us more inventory space. We've seen some very cool looking bags in this game's trailers, and I'm going to call them Special Backpacks. I think it would be cool if they all did something different. What if this fish shaped one adds 10 more spaces to your inventory, but only for sea creatures? This star shaped one could add 15 more spaces, but only at night. This allows for the player to choose their accessory based off of what they like to do in Animal Crossing, or what they have planned for that day. Number 18, Berry Bushes. All of our fruit in Animal Crossing comes from trees, but I think it would be cool if bushes got in on the action. Having blueberries, blackberries, and more would be a great start. Number 19, Bikes and Scooters. There's something very relaxing about slowly walking around your town in Animal Crossing as you hear the fish swim and the bugs chirp. But there's nothing relaxing about trying to get to the store two minutes before closing to sell all of the rare bugs you just caught. Bikes and scooters would be useful in times like these. They'd provide a speed slightly faster than running, but wouldn't be something to use all of the time because of the risk of trampling flowers immediately. Number 20, The Music Player. If you ask an Animal Crossing fan which game has the best music, you'll get a few different responses. Some like the feel of the GameCube game, some prefer Wild World and City Folk soundtrack, and I myself enjoy New Leafs the most. From what we've heard so far, New Horizons is bound to have another great hourly soundtrack, but it would be nice to be able to choose those from previous games as well, just for nostalgia's sake. A music app on the Nook phone could allow players to choose the soundtrack they enjoyed the most and have it play in their town. This would add even more personality to everyone's islands, as you could hear a completely different soundtrack while visiting someone else. Number 21, more pointless options. 
New Leaf's Welcome Amiibo update added the ability to sit on rocks, and I don't know why I love this so much, but I do. I want New Horizons to add more ultimately useless features like this, just because it could add so much charm to the game. In one of the trailers, we see Butch plop down on the ground, which really makes me hope that there's an option for us to do the same. Imagine sitting down on the beach on a starry summer night, the faint sound of cicadas chirping just barely audible over the soft sound of crashing waves. Ugh, doesn't that sound amazing? Number 22, The Wishing Well. Like I've said before, I personally think the tedium of Animal Crossing is one of the things that makes it enjoyable, which is why I don't do things like time traveling. However, I will admit that it isn't very fun when you have one bug left in your encyclopedia that's only available in the summer, and it just turned fall, meaning you have to wait an entire year to receive whatever reward you would get for having them all just because you are one short. That's where the wishing well comes in. The well would be all about defying the laws of nature, as horrible as that sounds. Say the scenario I just described occurs, and you really need that final summer beetle. Throw a few thousand bells into the wishing well, tell it what you need, and maybe, just maybe, you'll find something glowing on the tree next to your house the next day. Now, it's important to know that the wishing well wouldn't just be able to accomplish any task, making the game too easy or boring. It requires more bells after every use, and wishes can only be made once a week, so it's important to only use it for something you're absolutely certain you need. On top of that, there's a chance your wish won't even be fulfilled, so it's definitely a high-risk scenario. But I still think something like this could help a lot of players out if they're looking for one more T-Rex fossil, or just can't wait to catch that coelacanth. Number 23, more special animal interactivity. Do the special animals in Animal Crossing really have lives outside of their buildings? I mean, think about it. That's pretty much the only place we ever talk to them, and they stay there almost all the time, unless there's some sort of special event going on. One of my biggest hopes for New Horizons is to make the special villagers actually feel like villagers, not just shop owners. I want to be able to see them walking around the island after their shops close for the day. I want to feel like my relationship with them is actually improving, and isn't just all business. It seems like such a small thing, but would add so much personality to these characters fans love so much. Number 24, Randomization Options. New Horizons seems to be setting out to give the player more control than ever before, which is great and will allow for a lot more freedom. But the thing is, I'm not sure if I necessarily want to control everything. I've gone over this before, but I feel like the randomness in Animal Crossing is part of what gives the series its charm, its identity. To strip that all away and leave it all in the hands of the player sounds great to most people, but I know that I myself still want some random things to happen, and I know that some others agree. For example, I see some people saying that we should be able to design our islands, choose where the river flows, decide where the cliffs are, etc. I hate this idea, mostly because that's just not how I'd like to play the game. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not saying not to include these features for those who want them, I'm saying that the option to have things like your town layout randomized should still be there for those who don't. Number 25, New Animal Species. This is an obvious one, but I feel like I need to mention it since we don't see any new species on the box art besides special characters. We need some new animal types in New Horizons. I don't care what they add, just anything new. My most wanted animal species is currently bats, so if they decide to add them into the game, I would be ecstatic. Number 26, no more get together scheduling. There's absolutely nothing worse in this world than an animal asking you if you want to come over, only for them to try to get you to schedule a time later on in the day. This is just the worst, because then you forget and the animal's upset, it's just a huge mess. Please Nintendo, no more of this, just let us go to an animal's house when they actually ask us to. Number 27, Captain's Fishing Boat. We know that Cap'n is going to have to play a different role in this game, since his job in New Leaf was to take us to Tortimer's Island, and now we live on an island. Hey, has anyone noticed that we're pretty much just following Tortimer's life in these games? From normal resident to mayor of the town to islander? Eh, that's a subject for another video. Anyways, back to the point, Cap'n's gonna have something different to do. So, what if instead of sailing you to the island, he just took you out to sea? Being able to sit on the edge of the boat with your fishing rod trying to reel in some rare sea creatures that can only be caught in this fashion? Well, that just sounds incredibly enjoyable and relaxing. Number 28, the return of ordinances. The ordinances in New Leaf were a great step forward in terms of diversifying your town, but it feels like there was so much wasted potential that came with it. The four options it gave were great, but most people I know just ended up going with the beautiful town ordinance so they didn't have to worry about weeds anymore. 
It would be great for them to come back in New Horizons with some more options. Maybe a fisherman island option where more fish spawn, or a fossil finder island where more than four appear every day. Obviously, they wouldn't be called ordinances in this game since we aren't the mayor anymore and they would have to be applied differently. Maybe Rover can ask us what kind of island ours is when we see him on the plane, and that's where we get the options. An early bird island, a beautiful island, a profitable island, a fisherman island, etc. Number 29, well handled progression. Progression in the Animal Crossing series is always handled extremely well. It's incredibly satisfying to build up your town from almost nothing. And in New Horizons, we legitimately start from absolutely nothing, which means progression being well handled here is more important than it's ever been before. There's a fine line to walk between giving the player too many accomplishments and having them unlock everything too quickly, and giving the player too few to the point where everything feels pointless. It is vital that New Horizons gets this balance right. The game needs to give us menial tasks that make us feel accomplished, as well as giving us larger scale things to work up to. The Nook Miles seem to be filling the role of smaller scale challenges, but we really don't know what we're working towards besides turning the island into our own town. Give us shops, large scale buildings, anything that we can see online and be like, yup, that's something I need on my island and will work to achieve. And finally, number 30 doesn't have anything to do with the game itself, but please Nintendo, give us more information! New Horizons comes out in less than two months, and in your own words, what we've seen is just the beginning. I know we are almost destined to get something in February, but we are so starved for new footage and features. Just throw us a bone, Nintendo. We're all gonna buy the game anyways, but show us more reasons to do so. And that's about it for this New Horizons wishlist. Now, I know I promoted this as the final wishlist I would do before the game comes out, but this was originally going to be a 50 things I want to see video. I underestimated how much I had to say about all these ideas, and having 30 of them already put me way past my regular video length, so I definitely didn't want to have 20 more of them to put in here. But if you guys are interested, and I have enough time to do so before the next major info drop, whenever that might be, I'd love to do a part 2 featuring even more of my wishes. So as well as telling me your own personal hopes and dreams, let me know if you want to hear more of mine in the comments below. This was certainly a lot of fun to make. Professor Pro, out.